Shalom 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 So, um, what we've been uh, discovering about uh, Shalom is it's um, is it's in the language of the Maharal being the tsura, the tsura for the um, the final form, meaning that uh, all of life is uh, is tending towards this, all of reality is um, moving towards this. It's a um, it's a uh, it's really a presence which which um, not only envelops everything, but actually is imminent within everything. And so, um, so we explored um, how that is reflected in the nature of the human personality in terms of a mirame, someone who lives in Rama, being automatically someone who's going to be anti-shalom um, in his own in his own personhood, unable to um, to align his um, his uh, outward expression and activities with his inner reality, and we saw that he's choresh uh, ra, which um, means furtively involved in creating uh, evil, which is um, disintegration and disorientation. Lashon cheresh and lashon choresh. Um, we saw that uh, a Yo Eitz Shalom is someone uh, beautifully um, in opposition to the Choresh, who's like digging and uh, pulling the ground apart. The Yo Eitz is someone who plants a tree and grows out of the ground a um, unifying power, which is um, able to integrate. Which, by the way, I think is is uh, one of the greatest. Um, directives for someone who's involved in yuts, you know, it's like you're, you're, to be a your eights is almost like a heath eel of eights. You're, you're like you're causing someone to um, to to grow and uh, and become this uh, integrated, alive, organic um, creation that is able to pull up out of the the ground of of um, disparate of dead life disparate elements that um, that are formed into an organic I mean, it's like it's mamish. it's like a guide for me um, in talking to people to like see a yuts like that and to see it in the context of this pasuk <coughs> as being a choresh ra you know as it's, um, it's, it's mamish it's the difference between <laughs> you can like, mamish experience this in advising people you know it's like the difference between um, the, the um, the Tachkiran, you know, I, I see this in the groups, you know, it's like the Tachkiran, the guy who like takes on the investigative function of like he's going to really find out what's at the bottom of this. And and the guy who's not looking for what's at the bottom of this, but actually is, is you know, just 
um, making it available enough to the person who you're in a yutz with to like touch it as a growing point. You know, it's like, okay, okay, we hear that. Like, we know about this. We're not going to go back into mom and pop and all the bad things they did to you and how your big brother was always laying into you. And okay, we could be, we could be whole race there. I mean, we don't, but, um, you know, uh, in, there's a limit. There's a limit to how much building happens by virtue of that kind of like, uh, you know, chafira. It's important to expose it. You know, it's like important to expose it. But then once it becomes exposed, so then I think um, fairly fairly soon after that, you want to be <coughs> integrating that into current experience and then and growing a tree as a as a um, as a power that draws up out of those dark places the uh, the, the latent life. That's really embedded in those, um, in those horrific, oftentimes just horrific um, uh, things. Uh, so, um, so that's um, that's something that uh, that's something that um, is very present in this in this piece in the Maharal. This is opening point of, of Nirma being an, an inner issue as being at the crux of what um, of what destroys the possibility. Of of, of shalom, and the other very powerful element was um, was that the inner experience of being a yoyet shalom, and in a sense, you can sort of test yourself if that's if that's where you are. You know, um, is whether you're besimcha or you're not besimcha. If you're not besimcha, so then uh, you know there's a sign that, that that's like a sign that the session's not going well. <laughs> if you if you like, it's not that kind of like an inner generative um, energy that's there. That um, that is really the emotional representation um, of shalom, in the sense of shlemut, and in the sense of uh, you know of, of, of binding binding things together into a uh, an integrated format. So the emotional experience of that happening is simcha, and that's like a consistent feature in, in the Maharal, that uh, simcha is always, um, you know, st standing in opposition to the hefseid, the piru, the piruk of, uh, of the loot, right, of the loss of life, of the disintegration of organic matter, of the kiryat arba that we talked about back in the day, right, that all those things are, are elements that, um, that are um, antithetical to the uh, to the experience of simcha. So these are these are tests and these are guides, you know, in terms of our uh, whether we're involved in, in in shalom at this point, or involved in you know pulling apart. Are we involved in um, in um, you know uh, creating greater and greater gap in creation, or are we involved in as we talked about last time, filling the niches? Of creation, um, when we talked about Yosef as the liminal, yeah. the liminal personality, you know, it's like the um, the uh, power to to discover in a um, in a in a pit, really, in an empty in an empty uh, hole, um, the the possibility of like, you know, <laughs> just, I think it's just so, you know, like people people usually. Read the medrash of you know a borek Embo mayim, you know. So as I was saying, you know Embo mayim, it's true. But well, the chashim karavi yeshbo, like I always have the image, yeah, like you know, just like landing in this you know pit of the chashim karavi, like wow, like what an opportunity. <laughs> like, yeah, I, and I thought it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like so let's see what kind of new life we can like bring out of the chashim karavi. You know, it's like because Yosef's always in the middle, you know, and in being in the middle, so he's he has that empowerment to um, to create new creations by listening to this and hearing that, and then wow, I hear this, I hear that, something's going on here. There's like this, that's this, there's that exactly, and then there's and then there's what's there's what's in the middle. That's the placement of the sowed. Um, and uh, and the placement of a, of, a, of a true tzaddik who is involved in that kind of creative activity, and so we um, we uh, in a sense discover Yosef as being the eights, which is really what he is, tzaddik katamari frach, and that imagery is always used around the tzaddik. You know. 
שנים ורעננים יהיו. ‫אקרץ שתור, אפרגי מים. ‫אקרץ שתור, אפרגי מים. ‫אקרץ שתור, אפרגי מים. ‫אקרץ שתור, אפרגי מים. ‫אקרץ שתור, together what seem to be disparate and unrelated elements and then why right, discover like this um, right, this connected to that you know and then, then something new is born of that right and that's mamish the way of the Bria it's mamish the way of, of, um, of from the beginning of Rishi Bara looking at Hashemayim Veta Aretz okay we've got Hashemayim Veta Aretz now we're ready to go with uh, you know that's got to be set up As the, um, as the context for the creative activity is by first noting the antipodes and then discovering the, um, the synthesis, the, the, okay, the synthesis, the, um, somehow that's like a dead word to me, but maybe, you know, but synthesis, it's, some, it's like there's something new that comes out of it. It's not necessarily a synthesis in the sense of trying to give space to each of the things. It's like oftentimes just, Something, something new that something comes else. out of it. Like, look what's happening right now. You know, it's like, you know, there's Yosef, <laughs> there's you, and there's someone. What are you talking about? Like, I mean, you talked about Yosef Shalom. Like, what are you talking about? That's not really a synthesis. Those are two elements that are, you know, that are disparate. Is that a synthesis? I mean, it's a drawing fact, I, together. It's no, a synthesis. synthesis is creation of something new. Okay, fine. Which is neither this, but this is sort of, yeah. neither this nor that. Okay, uh -huh. but but the, the point is that 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 the Hikachu, like, is is an is a um, is really a statement of shalom in that sense that it's a um a uh, a, 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 um, a completeness but which is born of a uh, of an availability and an openness to the uh, to the binding together of, of disparate elements and as long as a person really i mean this is I mean, this is a very true thing and it's right it's one of the one of the one of the best reasons to stay honest <laughs> you know, it's like you know it's like you really you really lose That possibility, if you lose the, um, you know, the personal uh, willingness to be uh, just like you know in that, in that um, availability of, of uh, you know, it's like if, if your mouth and your and your heart are at a distance from one another, and not um, and not um, in in a, a bound, a bound and um, tamim. Uh, stance so then that, that then you you're unable to be um, available to new possibilities because you're always on guard you know of being exposed and so basically then your stance on things of of, of creation is 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 guarded you're not you're not able, you're not able to hear them you're not able to listen to them because your 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 primary stance in life is to be be closed down and to create these kinds of walls within yourself. So, um, so this has been very um, rich in terms of uh, in terms of a personal directive. Uh, that was like the first the first section, and 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 then and then then we saw how um, how uh, how this is really very much reflective of of the imminent nature of the evolutionary process. As being um, as being the uh, formation of of life forms in in the niches of life, you know, where this you know there's a need that's that's a result of the fact that creation tends towards integration, at least from a certain perspective, right? Obviously, there's the entropic as aspect of it, but in terms of the the evolution of 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 biological systems as being an ever more complex uh, complex uh, which is which is really a result of, of um, opening gaps that then require new life forms to to emerge from those gaps that bind together uh, realities um, that uh, that are you know growing apart or that that, that now would, um, would tend to to uh, you know, dumb down life. Instead, like there's new, new connectivities, right? Until you keep working up the scale to getting, you know, this incredible jump into into the into the emergence of, of, of the, the, the brain and mind, which uh, 
which just according to some of the mechanics of the theorists, you know, just like this becomes by, by virtue of the the emergence of, of social systems and, 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 and creates and a whole new arena, right? Yeah, inter interrelationships of, of where it's we're by virtue in that, in that complexity. Incredibly, you know, we're 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 by 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 over by over overriding the the drive for independent and individual survival with the with the introduction of of cooperation. I mean already on the bacterial level, but like beyond that with the with the introduction of cooperation and integration and interdependence as opposed to um, just separate um, separate entities as that becomes more and more uh, developed and complex so you need a more and more complex brain in order to uh, in order to integrate you know, all these different things that are that are happening and however however it works I and mean, if we look at if we look at things that way it's truly marvelous in the context of of shalom as being the tsura achrona, meaning that that's the direction that everything is tending towards, as it becomes more and more oriented uh, towards complex complex life and complex systems that are able to integrate more and more vast um, experience, a vaster and vaster experience. So in that sense. Um, we're really um, on the levels that we were that we were speaking out also around Hanukkah. We're really mamish moving from a light which is a simple presence of all towards mind, which is a simple access to um, to what is. It's like a simple access to what is, you know, and that that becomes like this this, this vast consciousness. I mean, you know, I'm a I mean, it's really not on the edge of it is, I guess, parapsychology still is, you know, a bit out there, you know, it's still, you know, but, you know, parat your safe, so parat your safe, so you're going to be able to have parapsychology, you know, <laughs> like, but like the things that are, the cows, right? no, I'm just talking about like, I needed a diagnosis this morning, I have this moon, it's just like, it's just like, oh, like, what the heck is going on, you know, like, it just, yeah, like, a, whatever, I like, it noticed something that like, it worried me, so I have this, this woman, like, Paul, she's just, Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. No, it's this. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like it's just diagnosed by, by by looking with a clairvoyant looking. I mean, it's like it's still astounding to me, even though like I know a couple of people who are, have access to that kind of information. But it's like, um, what is that? What that is, you know, as near as we know what it is. Is something which belongs in this in this realm of like an expanded expanded presence of mind, which is touching uh, the original the original light, which is a uh, simple simple presence to what is, and um, and the good news, right? You know that we saw at the end of Yilchos Hanukkah of the Rambam is it's the tendency that all life is tending back towards, but instead of it just being a simple light, it becomes one which has an incredible richness to it. And availability of of, of 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 individuation within it, which is inter interconnected, and ultimately the only function, um, and um, in the universe that we're aware of, that can can do that, is the human mind, is the human mind, whatever it is that the human mind is accessing, when it when it's able to move into a state like that, where it really touches things that are you know not. Not there in the, uh, in the in the physical contact of the uh, senses, the normal senses that um, that are that are access points. Um, the the dilemma being the dilemma being it's just like it's just, it's an amazing an amazing thing which is already I mean almost part of common experience to people who live in I we guess in the place who seek it who seek it who seek it who seek it. Um, it's just, uh, you know, okay, yeah, it's just an astounding, uncanny, um, uh, and still uncanny to us because of the nature of the development of our minds until now, but, um, you know, what will it be like when, when we're just there, you know, and, um, and, uh, and it's an ultimately integrated creation where, where we've really moved beyond the, you know, the survival of the integer. You know, and um, and uh, and that that condition of cooperation is mamish 
it's just the way we live, you know. So then we'll certainly be seeing things far beyond the uh, the extent of, the, of of our vision, of our personal vision, and um, and I I I do think it's a real. I mean, I was playing with the word before, but I think it's a true thing that um, that the power and the porat aspect of 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 Yosef, which is like this, it has everything to do with shame and and just like being in the vitality of life that vitality that vital you know reality that's so alive and so bright as yosef is the lehava is also in the same way that it's porat as rashi explains as chen it's also porat as poriut i mean that's like the, the perus that he skips over so to speak and well, wait a minute is that i mean is that what we're talking about that's his bracha yeah that's not really what that word means I mean, it's like it's amazing because the insight is so deep because that's how it works. That's it goes to the source of the poet. Which, exactly. Which is that in between exactly. space. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Is in between space. And the source of the polar youth is in that that um, that area in between where there's so much vitality because the new creation is waiting to emerge from there. So this is uh, I'm sure you could bring us a, a a million examples, you know, from history of like how how societies like new societies emerge that would be interesting to look at the outlier is a well-developed the outlier yeah exactly. the outlier is a well-developed theory. right so. right the, the, just out beyond the boundaries of the civilized and um yeah or I mean, new creation whether it's in in one's own thought the thoughts that we right. that we exclude but we don't entirely reject that you know like on, right. on the edge of our right. consciousness or right. it's right. the on the margins of society yeah the, the, totally. Okay, so this is like this is this is really the porat. This is like the, the realm of the chain, which is um, which is the um, which is the, which is both the, the, the fertile, so the fertile, and the vital. I will tell you this, just in terms of understanding the structure of the porat, is that in human cultural history, that outlier is always the pastoral element of society. Right. Because they lie between the settled agricultural and the truly wild. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> in particular, all the above all the ancestors and growing. Right. And yeah. Right. Interesting. Where, where are those today? Where are those today? So this is this is um, you know uh, very much then uh, beyond be, be behind what we were I think exploring more in detail last time around Yosef as the Ish Shalom as the person who sent. To discover shalom um, and all of the um, all the energy that's um, that's uh, that's that's around that. So this is um, this is brought out in the Maharal in the end of this passage that that we've been in, which is you know the, of the, uh, the shalom being the tsura achrona, and um, and in the medrash on Reish Yudalid, where um, I don't think we'll read read the whole thing, but where he brings from the Vayikra Raba Rabbi Mani Deshab. Rabbi Yehoshua de Sichni, Shem Rabbi Levi, Gadol Hashalom Shekol Abrachol, Tovo Ben Achamo, Shachodesh Baruch Hu Nevin Av Yisrael, Chot Mim Veshalom, Fiat Shema Poli Sukat Shalom, B'Tfilo Oseh Shalom, B'Firkat Kohanim Yasem Tash Shalom, Vein Liyad Abrachol Korbanot Minayin, Shene Marzot HaTorah Laola Velamin Chavilchat HaTol Asham Lomiluim, Ulezeva Chashlami, Vein Liyad Abrachol Korbanot Minayin, Shene Marzot HaTorah Laola, Zotorat Mincha, Zotorat Achata, Zotorat Asham, Zotorat Zeva Hashlami, El Bukobano Diachi, Bukobano Tzibu Minayim, Talmud Loma, Eleta Asul Hashem, Muadechem, Musayim, Mishlami, everything's Musayim, Mishlami. And the, um, the, uh, the uh, co- contrast that the Medrash sets up here between Bracha and Korban is something which is very present in Bezrat Hashem, will also accompany us into into the uh, the next piece but this we, we we saw as it played itself out that the maharal is very insistent that shalom always requires that the pieces that are um that are involved in the in the piece right are uh, couldn't resist it even though it's, yeah. a, it's a poor translation of shalom but the the pieces that are involved in the piece are separate and distinct um entities which are each seeking their part in the in the higher whole, it is not a simple unity. Shalom is not a simple unity. It's a harmony. It's a it's a harmony. That's the link we said between Shalom and Malchus. Right, right, right. right. Uh, well, the difference between 
Shalom. A link, I said, between Shalom and Malchut. Right, a link between Shalom and Malchut. Exactly. That's exactly what, what Malchut requires, and that's why the Yisod must always be feeding into the Malchut, because, because the Malchut will have a tendency to stabilize the system, and then the Yisod is constantly enlivening the system by, like, wait a minute, what do you, I mean, you do have this and you have that. Yes, we put, we put everything in order. Why would you uh, change it now? <laughs> it works so hard to get it this way. <laughs> exactly. Just, you know, stay away. We've got everything in order. Everything is in its place, okay? We're in Shalom. That's when the the uh, Yisod says, no, baby, that's Shalva. That's Shalva. That's not Shalom. That's just, you know, being content. But what we're talking about is Shalom, which means I see a space in between this integer and that integer. Like, what, what could possibly be there that might be new and connect them in a way that they had never discovered that they share as a as a common ground oh my gosh you know no it's like the whole thing starts to like rupture again i mean we just thought we had it was clear right there's the united states and there's the soviet union and there's like the world is like a clear place and then soviet union collapses the united states is on top and then all of a sudden you have this rising the end of history is <laughs> over. finally i've discovered the end of gog and magog and so it's like oh my gosh you know what happened like that was just a few years ago, wasn't it? You know, you know the essay I'm referring to? No. This, oh, okay. It was supposed well, to be yeah. a, a, a oh, groundbreaking. He wrote the end of history, claiming that like there's now going to be a unipolar world. Everything's going to be different. Really? And, like, oh my gosh! Like, five years later, they're like feeding his 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 paper to the fish. <laughs> like, what I used, and everyone was so excited about it. He wrote it. You remember when it came out? Well, who, 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 the Francis Fukuyama. Okay, important? amazing. Well, it was just so amazing. Around the same time, they were saying, yeah, the doubt can keep rising. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> right. Forever. The, two are, the two are not unrelated. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, unbelievable. It's just like, you know, the Tower of Migdal Babel just keeps like getting rebuilt. And like, you know, I'm sure that each of the bricks fits exactly into its place. And then you get this guy, Abraham, walking along. And, you know, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not even sure he just said that, you know, he just like <laughs> notes that there is a little gap between this brick and that brick, isn't there? Like, oh, what that goes in there? <laughs> <laughs> and, it's like, and, then he's, and then you have like the Evan Masu Aboni, right? Rosh Pina, which in the Rabbi Eliezer is a description of Abraham, who's like, he's Mamash Six, the Evan Masu Aboni, right? Rosh Pina is this like this, just like the jagged edge. It's like the jagged edge. It's almost like he notices the jagged edges that are in the levaning that have been so carefully placed there. So it's like this is just like keeps unfolding. That's the Rug Zosha Yosef. He's Mamish Margis. Mamish Margis. <laughs> so, um, okay. So the so so the, the the beauty of the discovery, right? As much as like we enjoy that shaking things up, but the beauty of it is that the that it is the power which is actually unfolding and unfurling the shalom. Which is the which is the ground and the tendency of creation and the evolutionary process, a greater and more more broad, uh, broader and broader vision, until like you, your mom is able to see everything because you are living in that realm, which is which is the realm in between. It's basically that's what's going on with these with these seers. Also, you, you like live in this realm in between. You know, it's like it's, okay. Sorry, I'm just coming in all like this. Yeah. And I really apologize for being late, but at least you gained a little something. I just have to, you know, I have to take care of this thing on the phone. So, so you yeah. know, but uh, okay. Now, now this next metric, which um, which uh, the uh, the um, the Maharal brings, is um, is a new level. And this new level is something which um, he actually quotes at great length the Medrash. And what we're going to do instead of like just reading it through the way he brings it, we'll read piece by piece and just perush piece by piece, because otherwise it just like would be here all night. Um, <clears throat> just the reading of it. If you, are there any questions or comments that any people want to add on on this, like where we we've come to an enriched an enriched review? <laughs> Your uh, statement about you know, the interplay between order and disorder, you know, like the sense that to grow it, that's reminding me of, um, of this book called Meta Halacha, which talks about the process of Halacha over, like, over time. Mm. Kind of, mm. um, 
that's the most important part of it. And it's the same thing. So this is, you know, the code of fire. It's whole structure. It's the Seems we're, we're done. Everything's we're done. And all of a sudden, you know, things start to change. What this about this? What about thing. that? And they start to expand again. So then I know we gotta like bring it down to a code again. You kind of see, you know, things go like in a way. Totally. You expand, you close, expand, you close, and that's how, how things yeah. go. Punctuated right. equilibrium yeah. is what it's yeah. called in the definition. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, punctuated equilibrium. equilibrium. Things have a tendency to move to rest, and the theory of punctuated equilibrium is that the universe is also allowing. I Meaning right. the niches will become saturated, and then a meteor will strike the planet, or you know, the percent of oxygen in, in the atmosphere will shift, or whatever. Right. Everything dies, <laughs> and then and then it, it comes again. It's amazing. It's just like it's and 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 when when you take this picture of Shalom as Sura Achrona, it just becomes I don't know to me it becomes such a such a hopeful, hope filled um, depiction you know, with with um, with, uh, with the discovery. Uh, we'll put it like this, right? With the discovery of systems as moving towards greater and greater complexity and integration. So that just changes the whole vision of like what the meaning of uh, of each of each fighting for its place is. It um, it doesn't necessarily change the experience of dealing with it, you know, in, in the present. You know, it's still ugly and, and bloody and, and hurtful, and there's all kinds of stuff that, that you know that are you know extremely pain filled. But ultimately, it's this you know it's the vision of Yosef who's speaks to the brothers and says he's the one who really discovers that vision which has become almost like a commonplace now in terms of like, you know, people talk about like you know that wasn't in the Chumash until the introduction of that personality you know the introduction of that that vision so he's really the he's really in that sense the evolver and so beautifully, just to bring it to close, this and he's, he's really the eights, and you know, he, that's what he is. It's like, you know, it's like this, this new plant life that it grows out of um, out of the ground. You know, it keeps growing. Uh, keeps growing. How how is your sura after Yeah. So so I I I I hear that. It's a good question. By the way, did you check whether there's actually an ish matzliach? Because he's not. Check. It's not. He's not. Well, it's just not okay. okay. Anyhow, just wanted to make <laughs> that correction. <laughs> second, <laughs> second, second point. Now, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, they will say that. Yeah, Fine. That's how they see themselves because they're on Shei Halacha. Okay, but I wasn't like pulling it out of like. <laughs> no, I'm not accusing you of pulling it out of the hat. I'm just saying you weren't pulling it out of the chumash. That's all. Now, <laughs> regarding, <laughs> regarding the second <laughs> point, regarding the second point, good. Okay, look, I'm not saying I'm just, just one of your comments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Shoo. Next. Just asking. Next. Regarding Shalom, that's it. That's. Is it back in the commission now? Yeah. Reinstated. Change the safer code. Yeah. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. 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 Yeah. So you're wondering, I mean, so if this is the Tzura Achrona, so then why isn't Yehuda the Shalom? Yeah. And it's Tzura Achrona, and it's minimal. Well, you addressed this Which last week. Quite the, the, yeah. What was that? What was was it, we often are led to believe that there's a, a two-step process. That first there's, ah, first, right. first there's the Mashiach ben Yosef, and then there's Mashiach ben David, whereas what developed last week was that the idea that they're actually um sort of two layers layers of of the process i mean you, because the the flip side is if you don't ever have you da then there can't be progress either right because there's no way to measure toward anything right? no, yeah, but, 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 but not everything is mutable there are things that in order in order to integrate and grow which become do become building blocks the question yeah. is whether one worships the immutability of them or whether one Remembers to keep them dynamic in their relationships and growing, etc. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, good. I don't remember what we were saying sure. last time. That's the answer. Well, no, I think it's actually a very excellent answer in the sense that that um, indeed, along the way, uh, Yehuda is not the Ishalom by any means. He is not the Ishalom. But by the by the end of history, when we're at a point when there's been a full unification of uh, Shalom and Malchut. Then, then we're not. 
and we're not really looking at that as two, two separate and distinct um, realities, but like Yechezkel describes, they've been, they've been merged. In other words, there's both this, this power of Tzura Achrona, which finally, you're absolutely right, only becomes re- revealed in reality through Yehuda. But it's only been revealed in reality through Yehuda by virtue of the, of the input of, of Yosef. In other words, it's not, it's not something of his own. It's something of the interrelationship between the, the dynamism of Yosef's push forward and Yehuda's um, realization of that in a structure. And Achinam, but that's why I see Yosef as the mover toward. As mover toward the so the impregnator of right of a malchut of the malchus. Right. Of the malchut. I mean, in a sense, it shouldn't bother us too much because because um, malchut is lately migarma klum. You know, it's like malchut is malchut is 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 um. You know, in a sense, it's the in a sense it's it's. You know, you're, you're you're definitely right about it being like it's 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 the it is the final tsura malchut. It is the final tsura, but nevertheless, it's 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 power. Its empowerment of shalom is really is something which which is which is invested in it by Yosef. I mean, does someone see something that could, could enunciate this better? And, uh... yeah, only only insofar as that anything which is complete in this world is dead. Yeah. So and so and so therefore it, it, it's it, it's a receiving vision, Malchut Yehuda, in that sense. Because if it's truly complete, then it's not an open system anymore. It's continued receiving. You know, and so and so the the either you could say, fine, Shiachim would be a completely different world. Right, or you can take literally that vision of Yechezkel when when he he. It's not that Yosef is subsumed into Yehuda. There, they're 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 unified, they're merged. There's a there's a popular uh, spin in the egalitarian world, which presents the shepherd as a married husband and wife. But um, over here, it's coming up for me in terms of Malkut, the feminine of Malkut, the pain yeah. of the son of Gabra. I'm wondering what you're right. Oh well, yeah, they're definitely right. They're definitely right. You know, that's a that's a that's a uh, that's a legitimate insight. It's just an illegitimate application. <laughs> but um, uh, but it, it's 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 definitely the case. Of course, it's the case. You that that Yehuda is um, as ironically as much as he presents such a powerful um, and active position. Basically, what he's doing is he's a he's a fulfiller. Fulfiller in the sense of um, becoming filled with the fullness of a um, of another presence, and that's that's always the case, in, you know, in any kind of an, an organization. So the organization, organization. What's the organization? What, what are you talking about? The organization. The organization has, like, you know, it's like, what 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 is an organization? Like, what is that? It's not something of its own. So um, so in that sense, he's like. It's yeah, it's it's true. It's the it's the ultimate sura, but it's got nothing. It's got nothing. It's got no substance. No, it's got no substance. There's nothing to it. You know, so it can't really be the you know, in that sense, the sura achrona, <laughs> without without the presence of Yosef in it. But um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 more it's more complex. In other words, like the the thing which is showing through. That final structure is the shalom, which is Yosef. It becomes very beautiful, actually, to describe that as being the tzurah because it, it it requires that level of of, uh, of of unity between those two powers. But you know, Yosef's you know, tzurah requires Yehuda for its expression. Exactly. In other words, it's, there's no there's not going to be a tsura to Yosef unless there's Yehuda. But the tzurah achrona, in other words. Which can be named as being something is is shalom, but that's that's because of the presence of Yosef in the mouth. It's not something which could be which could be there for you who do without Yosef. And it's it's it's, re- it's really the case. I mean, he's the one who sent the road to shalom echad. But but yeah, but ultimately the Mashiach who will arrive is actually going to be a combination of the two of them. You know, and, uh, which is what Yechesko describes. 
that's a good, that's a good, that's a good question. It's like something to contemplate how those, how those interplay, how that interplay works. Nevertheless, nevertheless, um, that's what it is. So, um, yeah, other, other things that we can work on. Okay, so the midrash, the chenu basifri, gadol shalom shakodesh bokhu shina b'davar mipnei hashalom. Shneimar ha'af unam elei ani zakanti. Gadol hashalom shashina hamalach shdiber manoch mipnei hashalom. Ki la isha amar hine at akara v'lo yaladet. ולא סיפר דבר זה למנוח. המלך דין מוטל למנוח what he had said to her in order not to create a cloaket between them, as her being the cause. Just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't reveal to Abraham what Sarah had actually said. גדול השלום שהשם שנכתב בקדושה, אמר HaKadosh Baruch Hu, יימאחר למים. Natil Shalom bin Ishli Ishto. So um, these um, these passages, which have to do with Shinui, three about Shinui and one about Nechika Sashem, are the ones that we'll now take a look at in, in Maharal. <coughs> we'll just skip to the to the paragraph on Rish Tetvav, which begins with Peush Tavarzeh. פירוש דבר זה מה ששינה הקודש ברוך הוא מפני השלום. כי כך מידת השלום בעצמו. It's just the way it is. But he doesn't just leave it as just the way it is. But, but, but that is the starting point. That that's, that's the way it is. That's what's so, so beautiful and, um, and uh, tempting about the Mahara. It's like it's a description of reality. It's not something which you know, is a compromise. It's the way it is. Right. First, he's going to give it like sort of the practice, and then he'll give it more ontological interpretation. So first level, first level is just, which is definitely deserves to be said, <laughs> namely that if the higher order that is being sought is shalom, and that is where things are uh, driven towards and meant to be driven towards, then that means that there are other things along the way which can be compromised in order to achieve that shalom. And that's not a lie. That's not a lie. A lie is when the hiding of truth is for the purposes of creating a further disintegration. When the purpose is a further integration, then it's mutar l'shanot. Now, that's not always to be recommended, right? Obviously, there are going to be even higher levels of integration that are possible when, when the truth is exposed. But nevertheless, and this is something which is... Um, which is, uh, you know, for us to contemplate, I think, in, in application in life. When is it a Ramaut? When is it a Mirma Belevish? And when is, it a, when is it a Simcha that's like bringing this about? Which is, okay, like, let's, it, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, it's time to move on. Yeah. I know, well, wait a minute, but it's like, you know, are you not going to deal with the sharp edges of, of, of the truth, of, you know, of what she said? No, because because the, what she said it it was, you know, it was her honesty about the situation, but it's not really something which is a dedication to the truth of reality, which which is in the higher order, the integration. Finally went on. I guess it discovered that it's too hot in the room. Is yes. that the idea? <laughs> so the air conditioner went up. <laughs> Well, 
maybe let's turn this one off too because <laughs> it's cold. I don't really need to be colder. It's not that cold out today. It's only cold in your mind because you know that Wednesday there's a big storm. That's a clarifying question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I understood correctly, um, you presented this notion of shinui as if there's a higher order or a higher value yeah. um, of shalom, that the shinui is not a it's not a falsification. But but that one has to constantly check because it, it, there's there is something called Ramaut which is which, right. which lends itself to disintegration. What I'm wondering is the relationship between but you, you said but there are situations in which you know the sort of sort of the, the, the truth must the edges need to be sharpened in order to expose what so, so what I'm wondering is is that are we actually really just shifting the definition of the word truth? Because because the specific examples here um, are what one might call a certain pedantic literalism, meaning like like there, there's a, a in my experience is often confusion between literalism and truth, because I hear him offering a, high, a higher order definition of truth, like oh, oh here's an example. My my brother writes for newspaper, and he said he's often challenged in in writing long stories when you're gathering lots of details and background information, but you see a truth emerging. And sometimes the facts of what you're being presented with don't really work with it. So he's always presented with a challenge. He believes there's something, a true story here. Right. What do you do when the facts actually don't match the truth? Hmm. Right. So I'm wondering, instead of, is he offering like two different things? There's like Shinui and Shalom, those are different values, truth and Shalom, Shalom trumps. Or is what he's saying is that, no, 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 you need to actually change your definition of what truth is. Okay, so let's read another line where he where he sort of summates what it is that he just spoke out in a surprising way. Vim ein shalom, vim ein shalom, harei yesh machloket, v'chol machloket hu shinui ba'olam legamre. Im kein b'lo ze yesh shinui. Mokach, yuter tov shiye meshane ipnei ha-shalom. First of all, it's clever. <laughs> but second of all, I think there is something deeper going on, and that is that that um, I'm not I'm not 100 sure it's relevant to the to the particular mm -hmm. example you just brought, but but in the interest of of of, uh, of integration, so it's permissible to do something which is disintegrative. What is disintegrative? It's when it's when you cover over the truth and you're you're you are Marame. I mean, she didn't say she didn't say and I'm, Va, right. she said Vadunizake. So so if you say that she said Vanizakanti Vadunizakain, if you, that's what you would deliver to Abraham's ears, then what you're going to create is an even greater Pirud. So so that Pirud, and I think here is the assumption, that Pirud is not going to take towards Shalom. Mm -hmm. Then there's a different kind of Pirud, which does take towards Shalom. Sometimes the Pirud, which takes towards Shalom, is not saying it like it is, but rather is orienting towards what is the underlying narrative or the underlying story, which is waiting to be brought out and for that you need to cover yeah for that you need to cover over a certain detail in order to bring out what truly is the underlying story that truly underlying story is that Yitzchak will be born and must be born and for that there needs to be a full zivug between Abraham and Yitzchak between Abraham and Sarah for for him to be born and for that to happen there needs to be that you know a covering over of that glitch now both, in a sense, are you know concerned with the question of shinui, meaning dis disintegration and and um, dissonance from the facts. Right? Dissonance, right? Both are involved in dissonance. The question is which is the which is the most the more primal um, movement, which is the more primal movement. So yeah. So now to answer to answer that question more directly, that would you know you know that would then. Uh, allow 
for a shino mipnei shalom if that's the interest. Uh, you know, I don't know if that will necessarily be the interest in his article. In other words, like there's a specific thing going on here, which is that it's shino mipnei shalom. Chazal were not matir to be mishane. Uh, you know. That's why I asked my question. Mishane l'shem ha'emet. Right. I'm not that, sure that we have something like that. I mean, we do. We have a little something like that, where Chazal say that you're allowed to say a halacha in the name of an Adam Gadol. You told it Ilan Gadol, right? Right. You told it be Ilan Gadol in order to have that halacha accepted, even though the Ilan Gadol isn't the, isn't, no one isn't the one who said it. So that's in the interest of a, um, you know, something which needs which needs to be done. These are tricky realms. You know? well, I'm going to push hmm. a, a little bit further. I mean, it's very nice to say that you know, it was the shining the same shalom, but not shining the same emet. But if we're speaking of this in the practice, which is as you pointed out where you started, I have to have some idea of what shalom is in my mind. Meaning, yeah. if I'm if I'm going to have right. some vision right. of of what the shinu, what the appropriate shinu in that moment is, I mean, it's noteworthy that um, that it was a malach and a kadosh baruch Hu who did the shinu here. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. You didn't, the midrash didn't give us examples of, of people being doing this, yeah. for doing it be, no, this bit, yeah. because they, there's a confidence in the vision of what shalom is. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Nevertheless, it's given as a hora yeah. that mutar l'shanos is a halacha l'maisa hora. But it just pushes no, the question: is so how do you know what shalom is in this moment? Well, I really, I, I very much odd, identify yeah. with this, though. I mean, uh, you know, in the sense of like, um, sure. people lives, people. I mean, I know this in people's lives, in our own lives. Like, people live false narratives. Like so often, they live false narratives, and they they live those false narratives oftentimes because what they've taken to be the defining feature of their narrative is not at all the defining feature of their narrative. You know, like there's a whole other line of of a story that they're just not noticing because they're so hung on one particular piece you know so so um you know you won't necessarily be there mishane but you will you will be makhe you know you will attempt to like you know to dull the edge of that piece in order to bring it into more into a greater highlight the other story which they haven't been willing to tell themselves so um um that's like uh, you know, like if, if you maintain your you know your your principle of being absolutely and starkly honest, so then you lose yeah you do lose the truth of what's happening. I mean you, know, I mean, you see this all the time, and it's like it, it, it it's so ugly you know it's so ugly where where people will be destroyed in their reputations for one you know one glitch to do to do okay the guy had a the guy had an afila. He had a feel. And like, okay. Does it, does it really define him? Does it really define him? And that becomes a question, what does it really define him? If you see other indications which which describe a pattern. So okay. So then then you discovered like a, a you know a, 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 a real storyline. But if it's just in a feel, it's just in a feel. So you, you, you know But you, you can't you, argue with the facts. Exactly. So then you get like, you know, so uh, and you see the way this is abused and used. Uh, and it's a like, major tool of politics. It's a total, I mean, like, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, I didn't know this was going on with like, like, Alan Dershowitz bland. now. Like, there's some, some, some girl, like, made some claim that, that you it's know. A bit, yeah, it's not him. It's just him and Prince Andrew. And, and I don't know. It was like, it was like I mean, like, come on. You know, like, uh, with, with no no grounds for it. I mean, maybe, the, I don't know. No, I mean, not I'm, I'm not there to, to privy to what's, what's actually going on, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, I mean, then that becomes the man's story right and that's it now that's not that's not accurate that's not accurate it's a piece but it's not the whole story but these they become these become extremely delicate issues you know like you know because you know so you cover up you don't cover up like what's you know should be exposed brought to justice yes but then like i mean the way the world sees it i mean these are like really big issues which i don't you know don't feel like capable of of judging. of judging right now, you know, not at all. I'm not going to answer. No, sorry. Oh, <laughs> but nevertheless, there is such a thing which is called mutar l'shanot mipnei shalom, and one offering that the Maharal is making. It's not the it's not his final statement on it, 
But one offering is making is that that if this is going to anyway cause shinui, and let's go back to where it was. It wasn't. I mean, I, I took it like vastly beyond, right? But but if if this is going to bring about a pirud and a pirud, so then there's a pirud and a pirud, which is mutter in order not to bring about that pirud and pirud. Complicated. Complicated. Can I ask a clarifying question upon Mike's clarifying question? I want what I'm wondering is. Uh, if we see that in, in the end of all this, Shalom and Emet actually are almost the same, or if we're saying within the structure, they can't be the same. And what I mean is that, you know, you can ask the question, why did Sarah say what she said? Like, why she, she actually said it. You know, like, why, why'd she say that? I mean, there was something that wasn't complete in her. Yeah. Was she, had she been complete, she would have said, oh, yeah, she would have said anything. She would have said, sure. Sure, sure. Because we can do anything, yeah. but she didn't say. It. I mean, there's some kind of sense of like process. Yeah. She hasn't gone to that to that final point. So therefore, right. had she been, then and then Shon can cook. They are the same thing. Or one could say, no, you know, the world's not like that. There's Emet, and there's Shalom, and there's no place where like Emet would be exact. It can never be that way. Oh, I wish you could say Shalom in such a case. There would be no need. There would be no. There would be no bringing out the Shalom of it. There would be no bringing disparate things together. In other words, there's no, there's no, there's no indication that, that, that. In other words, in a, in a way, they are opposites. I think. Uh, I'm not the opposite. I was asking what what Mike is saying here is like you know if there's a higher sense of truth then like the ultimate sense of truth, higher sense of truth is shalom. I mean, you can ha you can take anything that anyone says about what reality is. You can live with it. You you see the completion. You see how you fit into with what it actually is, versus saying. No, it, it may not be because there's always going to be a bigger picture you can't imagine. There's going to be a bigger vision you can't mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, even if you tell you what it is right now, it's irrelevant. Because you've got to, you know, not necessarily irrelevant, it's but it's not definitive. It's not, okay, there you go. I think it's the difference between a Newtonian conception of the world and a, and a quantum conception of the world. I think at the end of the day, we most of us still live in a Newtonian conception of the world, where that if you could nail everything down to its initial conditions, you should actually be figure out, be able to figure out what's exactly going to happen. <laughs> Therefore, we don't like this idea of Shinui Mishum right. Shalom. Right. Okay, fine, Mishum Shalom, like in order that there should be peace and we shouldn't all fight, but it's not really true. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a disconnect then between Shalom and Emet. Whereas the, the quantum concession is no, you can have a wholeness which emerges out of vastly different starting conditions. So the starting conditions are actually not definitive. They're statistically, you know, trending and et cetera, et cetera. But 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 you can't trace everything back to its initial starting conditions and therefore lock it in. So so that actually the truth of what truth is is shalom, and and not this uh, like I'll just keep using the word that bugs me pedantic literalism. Right, right, right. right. And, and I think that they're they are so it's a watershed of conception, and most of us still live in a Newtonian conception, whereas we ought to be able to put the pieces together. Why right. did Sarah say that? In the long run, she's going to have to explain it because if we're going to get to to the truth. It, 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 we got to work out. And the answer might just be, no, it's gone. Right. It was a moment. It was a glitch. It wasn't definitive. It was a glitch, but a not definitive glitch in the true, in the true overarching evolution that's occurring for Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be able to do and that. If it had been maybe called out true. in its truth, it might have tempered that. You exactly. must see this all the time in your work. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the, the idea of em Emmet Namito that really Nachman brings um, about the defining characters that it brings closeness is something that I find. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because okay. that's the Emmet that, that Breshit by Elohim was so good to evoke because that is like what the world is founded on is that it, is it brings closeness. I, I find a simplicity in that that you know, not even to like define Shalom on such a deep level, but just right. is this in the service of bringing closeness. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And that helpful. Yeah, that is very helpful, and that's um, that's um, the lineation between Emmet and Lami, Emmet Lamito, which um, the Rambam brings in Hilchos Sanhedrin regarding a uh, a dayan. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, well, yeah, there's various examples of this, various examples of this, but one which is very direct in the Rambam is is if a dayan, even though according to the mechanics of the rules. Of uh, of a din, a person, one one side has is the victor, but the dayan, the geschmeckt, he's like he's kimle. He's, we got he's, he, or he, not not even with kimle. The dayan simply 
He senses. Senses. Right? Senses the Rambam has it. He simply senses that there's a that, that there's a Ramaus here. He's allowed to pass it according to his sense of what's happening. Do you, you remember where it's in it? Uh, well, where is this? I guess. Yeah, yeah I'll I can find it for you. Yeah. I'll ask you. I think it's around Perik Chafal of Chafbet. It's like he talks about uh, also. Yeah. So like, um, so that's that's that, and that's in the Gemara. The Gemara actually makes that difference between the, the emet and emet lamito. There's a din, a din merume can be emet. It's emet, but it's just it's not set, emet lamito. You yeah. get to set the situation up perfectly. Right. Totally, it's exactly. very, very, very instructive. Like we, we thought, we, when we were talking about, it, he's referring to the to the to the Gemara says that a dayan dan, dan din emet lamito is a shuta from master bereshit. He's right. actually a partner in creation. Right. Right. Because it's that's, emet that's, lamito. That's what it says. Because it's emet lamito. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, if that emet lamito. Can be something which, according to the sort of the local mechanics of the din, is 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 not, is, is not true. So applying that to you know to, to personal situations, the local the local mechanics of the incident. Yes, yeah, she did say that. She did. Yeah, <laughs> she said it. Yep. I want her to admit it. I'm right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it becomes this this um, this uh, holding on to the horns of of just. Of the wrong, of the wrong, the wrong ox. You know, you're just like you're just going the wrong way because you're holding. Let go of those horns, man. But, but it's there. Wasn't it there? Huh? The shore. But you know, but I, now, now I want to just like you know pull back and say you know on a certain level you do have to be a bit of a malach. That's because because I mean I mean you, I mean you brought in journalism, but I mean that's but the but the uh, you know the temptation to to from yeah to 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 uh, forward an agenda and to give a certain reading as opposed to what you described, which is an honest um, uh, exposure to to, uh, to to the reality and a discovery of a narrative that's within it. Mm -hmm. Right, so you only tell that part of the story, which is, which is, you know, uh, has a consonance with the narrative that you're telling. I mean, the, the temptation there is. Like, when we do it in our own lives, forget like telling the story to other people. Every and editorial sorting. No, I'm just saying, think about like how how we sort experience. One of my wife's favorite expressions, like whenever something happens in the political or in the, like if there's a terror attack or something, you, you think people are going to change their opinions, but she always says, no, no, no. Anything that happens just basically reinforces people's pre-existing. Yeah. Yeah. Like the interpretation that people put on things just ah, see this proves x no it proves y i can't prove them both okay, question is where what where the origin of that you know starting point interpretation is yes yeah. that's a, that's a hard one to yeah. to uncover yeah. but in any case um in any case what 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 we're given direction towards here is is the and and this is the header that we know right is this is the interest of shallow mm -hmm. is the interest of shallow and then he brings an additional interpretation which we'll let like, just open up now and the old kikafu baola we call it hadmina fachim the kabel min hashem mitbarak masha'in the kabel hashem the truth is the nature of reality is where he goes you see how he goes like a step more uh, existential the truth is that the nature of reality and existence is such that every opposite the all opposites are all receiving from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but each is receiving according to the particular um, definition or the particular place that it is meant to serve in creation. Okay, so each one needs to be able to receive in its unique place in an overarching vision, that overarching vision being provided by a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and therefore also providing each distinct element of creation its place. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of the, of the Western world that is being constructed on this. Uh -huh. Meaning? Well, the, the, the last thing that he says. 
עיקר השלום, exactly, הוא מצד שאין זה מקבל מה שזה מקבל. שלום, right, שלום is not... Everybody gets the same thing. Everybody gets the same thing. That is not שלום. That's something called fairness, which we don't have a word for in Hebrew. זה לא פייר, זה כן פייר. ולכך מותר לשנות כדי לעשות שלום, כאשר הקודש ברוך הוא משנה לכל אחד ואחד גם כן בפני השלום. זה מה שיש לך להבין, זה מאוד מבורך. אתה באמת what it is that uh, they're able to hear. What they're able to hear, what they're able to be in, allow for them the particular space they, uh, they are meant to occupy. Um, and that will, that's, that's the soul of Shalom, is the Shinu. And so, so since the soul of Shalom is Shinu, and that is the overriding Surah Achrona of the Bria, so then, of course, mutar shalom mitnei shalom, shalom mitnei shalom. That's what shalom is built up. It's unavoidable that that's going to be a requirement of the nature of creation. So then, the particular issue of like you know honesty, etc., becomes now participant in a much broader picture of like each each placement, each circumstance, each incident needing to be provided with, um, and each part. participant in that needing to be provided what it is that they can they can hear um, and that's appropriate to them at this moment I mean this is the sowed throughout really I mean like the the way the Rambam for instance describes the movement towards uh, living a life of love is very much built on telling people uh, things which are not the ultimate truth so I mean, you do but, but what they can hear they can hear the A picture of a you know of a god who is you know snapping you for this and getting you for that and zapping you for this and rewarding you for that they can hear that so give them that just like your child uh, thinks that the reward for being able to to read olive bays is some um, honey that's not the reward for being able to read olive bays you're 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 lying to him you're teaching him something which is false and Because that is not the result of being able to read olive base the rewards are so much more than that so what are you doing you're teaching him a lie and there are people who because of that have all kinds of you know, problems and occasion the children I don't I don't want to lie to my kid I mean I want to tell him it's like you know the way the way it really is I got to tell him the way it really is right. but you tell him the way it really is is not the way it really is for him <laughs> he's living in a certain level of awareness that Which doesn't it which in which he's not empowered to be able to to hear what it is that you think the, the honest parent needs to tell him the honest parent needs to tell him that this is you know that whatever it'll be I mean that you know uh, about whatever it'll be you tell me try whatever it'll be you know I'm an email like this or like you know sex like that or it's like you know that the truth is you know about the world it's like this You know, there's like the levels of consciousness which make it possible for, you know, even the same person growing up to hear different things. And it's your responsibility as the one who has a meta vision to provide for him the place that he's currently living. And to provide that for him. Thank you. Obviously, it's much less clean cut than, you know, the, the honest look. But the honest look is be destructive is, is, is destructive and it's not it's not the truth it's not the truth shalom. I'm sorry it's, true. Um, it's not shalom it's not shalom but, well but see how you put your foot in exactly what I was driving at right yeah, now yeah so go ahead yeah so you were like no well, it, yeah. it, just the call for this is an incredible demand um, for self honesty and Because I heard two things is that the parent who has to tell the kids really the way it is is obsessed with the notion that they really know the way it is which in itself is a very egotistical notion with anything beyond the like the you know as if what he knows is the is, end is point. The actual, exactly that, that, <laughs> that's one piece, beyond what he knows. right the, the other piece is that so say I let go of that something about as a teacher I have this experience 
often in terms of speaking, say, when I teach at Pardes or speaking with, with your group or and then, you know, speaking in our baby Josh or then speaking to like a more traditional like post high right. school orthodox crowd where you just you simply don't tell the stories the same way. Right. And I never felt that it was dishonest, but right. but but I, what I'm highly aware of is is that danger of that that of wanting to to be liked for saying a thing that people want to hear. That's right. That's because there's another side of Shinui to this, which is that this presupposes that the person speaking has a level of integrity, um, which is which is extreme. That's why I'm going back to the notion that it was Kodesh Baruch and the Malach. Right. Right. Yeah. No, we also we also was out. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Right, and we're told by Chazal that we're supposed to live in that way. Okay, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just noting the, the right. But you see, and it's so beautiful that Aaron is the is the Our is the only human example right. that we have of that because it's Aaron who also is the one who's Virachavas Samach Velibo, because he has the simcha which derives from the joy in, in seeing the achievement of his brother. Right. So if you if well, you we have know, we know he's free of the selfish exactly right. exactly right. in other words if you if you are ex- able to experience that level of love of another human being that 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 brings you to celebrate in, in joy that's like so then that is what enables you to be able to award each person his place because hmm. that's that's the depth of your commitment to the nature of creation is that each piece should have its place um, when when that's your true commitment. And it's not a matter of your, you know, your standing out or your uh, achievement as opposed to another's achievement. So then that, that's what enables you to be a Rodev Shalom that's even allowed to be Mishanam Yifnei Shalom. Because that, that's truly your commitment is that each element of creation should get exactly what it needs to have so that it can grow to be the most. It's so beautiful that 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 is our own, who's our ex- human example of being the shadow of Shalom, because he's really the one who's sameach Buluba. and that 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 empowers him to be able to hold all shneimas arshvati on his lave, you know, awarding each one its its precise and unique participation. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You really hear that, you know. You really hear that. Right. So he's the he's, think, he's the one who gives the bracha of shalom. He's, he's the one who's he's the one who's, he administers the what, the, the sota of the mashkin shalom. Ben, ben, it's his. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I see now so much more also now, Yoshua, in your question. It's like, you know, you see with Yosef's very precise attentiveness to the particular needs of each of the characters in the story. You know, it's like we're able to govern. Govern a story based on his responsiveness, his very direct responsiveness to to uh, to what the other is uh, in need of hearing, and um, and is meant to hear. And I mean, there's, there's a lot, a lot of that that happens there, which uh, which which enables him then to to govern a narrative and to govern a story in a way which becomes the author of this whole this whole um, unfurling of the of the of the shalom between the brothers. Is by virtue of his very, very profound sensitivity to the individual's um, placement in this, that is something which, because the you know the 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 overarching structure is really, in a sense, not his purvin, mm-hmm. and it's and um, and it will continue to unfold, you know, because, because and he needs Yehuda in providing that you know sense that that stopping point. Okay. And, and and the context which like which which places it. Well, he also recognizes that he's a talk about a king, and he, he understands that it's part of this. Exactly, exactly. Which seems to switch when he starts investing himself in other people's dreams, as opposed to his. Right. I just want to spell that out a little. Well, that when he's invested in his own dreams and the interpretation of his own dreams, yeah. You see the beginning of the story. Right. The, the story right. shifts when he starts investing himself in other people's uh-huh. dreams. Uh-huh. And that's when he really becomes. Yeah. He, he starts to right. fill his dream. Mm. Right, right, right. Exactly. I mean, his beautiful. Yeah. In other words, his, his. Um, it's really. It. The problem is not in his dreams, as you're pointing out. The problem is in his, um, in his public public publication of his dreams. Mm. The truth must be filled. The dreams. publication yeah. of his dreams. <laughs> well, he's telling the truth directly, right. right. and they hate him for it. Right. 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 And it's destructive. And it yeah, didn't bring about. The vision again, not the telling of the dreams, yeah. but the realization. Yeah. Or it 
did eventually. Right? Well, sure. <laughs> okay. No, say it. But not, but. The Gavoa al Gavoa Shomer. Right. right. And that's like a real question between um, between the ego, which Adam um, facilitates in Yosef, which is a place where wow. without responsiveness, without right. like seeming responsiveness, right. Right. narrative right. can also can also go Ari. Right. Right, very much. Well, that's yeah, that's magnificent. The that's what was worrying me. Between, uh, between the, the, there it's Aaron on the road of Shalom, and and Yosef's uh, enlivened, uh, you know, open-eyed receptivity of like what's what's coming, what's new, that combined to that uh, that the, dis the destruction, which which you can see why it's so much the response to Kafa Lem Harkigigit. Because the kafalim harkigigit engenders that, like, you know, the um, energizing of the Aharon and Yosef for powers, but then it just becomes a self-worship, like my own, my own projections about like what it is that you know that, that I'm seeing here, as opposed to what, what's really there. Yeah. There's something about Shimei which I uh, I'm not it's not sitting well with me because okay. it seems to be using Shimei in two different meanings second one's it's a lot better which is you know you sort of reveal what a person can hear it doesn't mean necessarily changing something you're just sort of not right. revealing the whole picture it's whereas, differentiation whereas the first one you're saying no you actually you are changing right and you can tell a child one thing and tell an adult something else and you can both be saying some of the long ones you're just not revealing everything right you're giving each one what he can handle right whereas i think the examples that he's giving here it's actually not the case i was yeah, really changing. changing what was said and now it's very unclear to me, like, what the boundaries are. There's one thing, like, not to reveal the whole truth, to reveal only bits and pieces, but just saying, no, there is something that happened. Oh, but I think, say, okay, beautiful, but I think, but I think you're already seeing it in a sense, in, in, in the way you're describing it. The, uh, you're right, the, but, the, but the provision, the provision of what each needs and is able to hold at that moment in order to move ahead can, uh, can uh, engender a need to, to not only to reveal partial, but actually to say something that's different than a higher order uh, perspective. Because you the, can, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, and there's the always there's right. always ways to you know to explain it. I don't know. You, you know, you always have to be very careful when when you're just kind of like rationalizing and justifying. But but like but but on the deeper level, the truth of Sarah is very very much profoundly connected to the you know to the to the bringing about of Yitzchak and that requires uh, not reporting or reporting differently what she said which is really more reflective of the truth of their relationship than the particular thing which is which she spoke at that moment so that's providing Avraham with something which he which he needs to hear it that way otherwise if he doesn't hear it that way then he won't he won't um, well, I guess the question I is like you know why does Avraham have to get the report I guess that's sort of where that's it was. a deeper question. Why did it need to be told so, anything at all? Why did it need to? Especially since the, the tone is like it's almost Kashmir was coming to Avram as as if to report something bad that Sarah did. Like why did Sarah say that? And it's like it, that, that 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 there's a tension that's created even in, in that report. There's a whole exchange. Not that's right. Didn't, but but it, you but exactly you hear there that he needs to be told that she laughed, but it needs to be adjusted as to what she laughed about. He needs to be told what she left. What she left, so what, even though it was to the, you know, the denigration mm -hmm. of Sarah. He needed to hear that she left. That's some, there's something there about the laughing, which is crucial. That she was laughing at something. She was laughing at something. That's part of. That's embedded in the zivu that's between them. I, th I, you know, as we've spoken out in other contexts, in, they can't. They can only really find their intimacy after they've laughed. There's something very deep about what's missing between Abraham and, uh, you know, Avram and Sarai, which are very closed um, names that disempowers them from discovering intimacy. And it's only when they laugh that that the the, the possibility of intimacy is, um, is is made available to them. That laughter is crucial, and it's crucial apparently that Avram here, she's laughed too. You laughed. She's left, and now you can be mitzachek between you in a way which will which will produce the man of intimacy, as we've described in the past. You know, as the as the one who discovers intimacy through play and through playfulness and through and through laughter.
right? So, so that's crucial that it be there. But to say the specific thing about which she laughed would only destroy the possibility for the intimacy, which is what the laughter is really there to engender. It doesn't matter if she laughed about this or laughed about that, when the point is that they should achieve a kind of a joinder, which can only be um, uh, you know, open to them by, by virtue of that kind of like, uh, you know, that, that very same wide open, wide eyed open wonder, but like, my gosh, could this really be? Could this really be? Could it really be? You know, Abraham, it's the same, it's mom's the same wide open wonder, which then gets played out, right? The double, you know, meaning, right? Played out by the Egel with the wide open eyes of the wonder, wondrous Egel and everyone's around being mitzachek, which is like a, which is a false intimacy because it's an intimacy with yourself. We're just kind of, you're playing with yourself. You're just playing with yourself. That's what that is, playing with yourself, as opposed to playfulness, which opens up the possibility of intimacy. So he must hear about that laughter. It's crucial that he get that report. But then that's exactly the point. So if you're furthering the shalom and the intimacy between them, then you want to provide them with, with in a sense, a common love common love that they shall have a child together, common love. You want to give them a common love. And anything that's getting in the way with that is not about the truth of what's happening here. It's not the movement of the, of the story. So drop it. Drop it. That's okay. Because uh, here he's what he can be provided with in order to provide them now with what they need to have. This is for, for real. You know, it's mom is like, this is, it's for real life. Yeah. Hearing the stories of our coin going like between, uh, yeah, you know, between people, and right? Saying things that aren't really true, right? <laughs> well, it depends what you mean by really. Okay. It depends okay, they are really expressed desires of this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. What you mean. Right. Okay, for say to start. They are nonetheless real. <laughs> I just want to, you know, I really, I, I, I know that I'm, I'm not okay in coming late. I want to say that and. Uh, and own that, and um, and uh, what can I do except like recommit to come on time and so we'll discuss the we possibility of it being a nine fifteen. Are we, Ravon, does that work here? If we if we nine fifteen, I think the, I can be the shared nine fifteen, and, and hopefully that will strengthen the commitment of all of us to actually be together at nine fifteen. Yeah. Great. Okay. Let's say it. Okay. So let's. Yeah, this is like really real. Yeah. Well, this is engaging one of the fundamental questions I have.